Good evening, everyone. I call the select board to order tonight, Tuesday, July 25th at 7.06 p.m. A motion to open the meeting. Second. All in favor, Ms. Mr. Aye. Aye. Krisky, Ms. Yes. And I vote aye as well. Roll call, Mr. Gito. I'm here. Uh, Ms. McCriskey? I am here as well. Vice Chair Cavey? Here. Mr. Carrara? Here. And I am here as well. I ask for you to stand to salute our flag if you are able. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In accordance with Governor Baker's declaration of June 16th, 2021, granting certain pandemic-related authorizations related to public board and town meetings, and recently extended until March 31st, 2025, this meeting will be conducted both in person and virtually via Google Meets. The meeting will be recorded by SMAC Cable Television and broadcast live and may be live streamed at www.stodentv.org. A recording of the meeting transcript or other comprehensive record of the proceeding will be posted on the town's website and or SMAC as soon as possible after the meeting if the live broadcast or live streaming is unsuccessful. Times are approximate and items may be taken out of order at the chair's discretion. Tonight's agenda will be, we have select board comments, town manager comments, citizens comments. We'll go right into consent agenda. We'll appoint someone um, to the Brockton area transit and then uh, our final agenda item will be to consider the solid waste rates policy and practice procedure and operations as presented tonight. And then we'll go right into executive session. This is not a public hearing. We will not be accepting uh, comments and questions from the audience since we previously had our information sessions and uh, it was open to, we had two, and it was open to the public. However, with that said, our town manager, I'm asking if you will make yourself available for any questions from the public after our meeting tonight. Madam Chair, it be my pleasure. Oh, thank you very much. So moving right along to select board comments. Are there any comments from the select board? Uh, Mr. Gito. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a couple of observations and one request. Uh, or maybe one observation and one request. Last uh, Sunday, I think we had a record number of people at the uh, Ames Pond uh, uh, waterfront. And uh, it, was, it was remarkably more than most times. And I would just uh, suggest that we keep that in mind at the end of the year because we may need to, to see whether or not uh, in the future we, we need to, uh, to create more space or do something to, uh, to deal with, uh, with larger crowds than perhaps we've had. We're getting uh, more younger families moving back into town, uh, coming into places that people like me were in before. Uh, so, I mean, that's part of the, the issue, I think, and we need to uh, recognize it and uh, be prepared to deal with it. Uh, the second thing is a request. I'm hoping that we can have two meetings of the Board of Selectmen in August, the first and the third Tuesday. We've had a pretty full schedule, and the, uh, 
the summer is uh, is going to be escaping us if we don't have a little bit of time to to do something else. So I just suggest that we all keep that in mind and uh, see if we can uh, plan to do the things that we need to do within those two meetings. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Gito. <laughs> We took that as a motion. We second. <laughs> well, I can't do that. <laughs> Are there any other comments from the select board? Okay. I do have a comment. Uh, recently, I attended a reception at the um, Federal Reserve Bank, and it was in recognition for the two-year program most of your leaders were in, most of the leaders of um, in the REMAP program, that's the Racial Equity Municipal Action Plan. That was a grant that we applied for and received approximately two years ago. And we received a certificate of recognition and participation, and it says, in recognition of your efforts to advance racially equitable outcomes in your municipality. Stoughton, um, this was signed by the, the organizations, the MAPC and the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston and the Government Alliance of Race and Equity. And I would like to hand this to you and perhaps uh, you could frame it and put it on the first floor. And I could tell you if, I, I hate to start listing. <laughs> Thank you, it's like we're graduating. Thank you. <laughs> to start listing names because I might overlook some, uh, but it was um, uh, Teresa Tapper and Deanna and Tracy and um, Christopher McGee, uh, Fran, I mean, it, Reggie, it, it's just a long list and I just hope I haven't overlooked a name, but they should be congratulated as well. And that's all I have for right now. Uh, moving right along to Town manager comment. Oh, did I? They, uh, no comments from any other. Mm -hmm. Select board. Uh, thanks again, Madam Chair. Just uh, one comment or announcement. Uh, Paula Newt, the treasurer collector, issued the FY24 first quarter real estate and personal property tax bills on June 30th, 23. The tax bills are due on August 1st, 2023. All unpaid first quarter tax balances will, will accrue interest at a rate of 14% from the first quarter due date. Real estate and personal property tax bills may be paid at Town Hall or dropped in the drop box outside Town Hall or paid online at Stoughton.org. The FY23 water, sewer, trash demand bills were mailed on July 12, 23 and will be due on July 26, 23. These bills may now be paid at Town Hall or dropped off in the drop box outside Town Hall. The collector's office is now accepting payments by credit card and debit cards in the collector's office for all tax and water, sewer, and trash bills. There is a 3% fee if a card is used to make a payment. That's my only announcement, Madam Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Calter. Um, Madam Chair. Yes, Mr. Gino. Uh, uh, through you to the town manager. Um, w one of us should should say a word or two about the uh, the 911 uh, public meeting that is uh, going to take place this Thursday at six o'clock at the uh, in this great hall. So, Mr. Gito, I so thank you for reminding me of that. Okay. So, as Mr. Gito said, we'll be doing a public information uh, session this Thursday at six o'clock. The executive director of uh, Regional 911 will be here to present uh, the technology plan uh, for the town. Um, he will be available with his staff to answer questions uh, for those who assemble for the information hearing. And just to note uh, that this is being posted uh, assuming there will be a quorum of select board members present. So you're free to do so, although it's not a formal selectman's meeting. So uh, it'll be a presentation of the regional 911. We will not be required to open and close the meeting, just merely notice 
that there may be a presence of a quorum of the select board. Thank you, Mr. Cheadle. Thank you. Moving right along to citizens' comments. Yes, uh, let's start with Mrs. Walsh. She was the first hand that I saw. Oh, stay right there. Welcome, Mrs. Walsh. Please state your name and address. Cynthia Walsh, 1096 Park Street. One of the things that came out of the um, public hearings about trash was the esteem which we, uh, in which many of the attendees held our trash workers. We don't, we don't often think of, um, I mean, it just said. Uh, Someone's got their mic on. Excuse me, can you mute yourself, please, if you're not talking and recognize? Thank you. Yes, Mrs. Walsh. There were a number of um, speakers who recognized the workers that do their streets and pick up their trash and how pleasant and efficient they are. And that was heartening. Um, And uh, I'd like to <clears throat> mention um, some employees I had some contact with in another department. Um, I went to the public library a few weeks ago to read the Brockton Enterprise, and much to my chagrin, <laughs> there's no paper copy now. You have to read it on a computer. And I'm about as computer savvy as any average dog or cat, and I had to ask for assistance. And the person who was working on the second floor sat me down at a computer, started it up. Um, when she needed help, she called forward um, two other employees. And with some false starts, we got me into the computer and reading the paper. And I only had to ask for help three times. But I managed to accomplish that task. And what I'd like to say is, while those folks were helping me, they helped every other person who came to that desk. Uh, talk about multitasking. Sometimes I had to go down a floor to help people with a copying machine. But uh, nobody stood in line and nobody went away disgusted and nobody um, stood on one foot tapping their heel. It was just an amazing performance. The next day I did call the library director. The library employees don't wear uh, the name tags of any kind, so I don't know who the ladies were. He said he could figure it out based on the position of the employee and what time it was of the day. But sometimes we forget. Um, there's a lot of um, add a girl and add a boys for first responders, but these folks, I guess you call them second responders, but without the folks that are picking up our trash <clears throat> and without the folks that help us at the library, a lot of us would be adrift. And I just wanted to recognize the good work that all the employees do, and they do it with a smile on their face, and nobody went, at my lack of ability. They, yes, Mr. Coulter. Madam Chair, I'd just like to thank Cynthia. Every time a town employee receives a compliment like that, it means more than anybody could imagine. And, and I appreciate it because now I know where to go to figure out how to read the online newspaper. So I appreciate it. Thank you, Cynthia. Thank them. Thank you very much. Uh, moving right along, uh, the next person was Ms. Oh, okay, we'll just go in line. <laughs> the next word, uh, Ms. Colburn, then on and on <laughs> until we. 
Thank you, Pat Thank Colburn, you. Precinct 4, 53 Gilbert Drive. I won't get into the trash because you said not to, although I would have lobbied people if I'd known we couldn't have gone into it. But I did want to comment that I'm here to hear the conversation. Um, I've heard from people that it's a done deal, that the board's made up their mind, and I'm giving everyone the benefit of the doubt that that's not the case, that there wasn't any type of serial deliberation, that nobody talked individually with the town manager and talks amongst yourself. And I've been on boards, and that's really hard to control, so I have all the empathy in the world for that. But I'm looking forward to the conversation, and I hope you'll talk about the detailed costs of like the bulky items that were never addressed. Um, I have some lawn chairs to get rid of, and there's just no way I'll pay $30 for a plastic lawn chair to be removed. And things like a broken kitchen chair, things like that that aren't your sofa, um, I, I just don't want it cost prohibitive, because then you'd have to call me in with truck, and I don't know what he's going to do when he takes those items away. So I'm looking forward to the conversation. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much, Ms. Colburn. There yes, seems to have uh, been some Mr. confusion Colburn. about uh, discussion between myself and the board members. I want to make something clear that I have spoken to every board member about our proposal. It's not a surprise. That is my job, is to get feedback, get input, and give input on our plan. So just for the previous speaker's knowledge, in fact, I did speak with every single board member because that's required of me. What I don't do is influence or poll. That is prohibited, and I don't do it, and I won't do it. But in terms of inform and brief, that's exactly what I do every week on every major issue before you. Thank yeah, you, Madam Chair. Madam Chair. Uh, thank you, Mr. Coulter, because there is a perception, even when you go about it in that way, it's that it's polling, but it's not the case at all. But I wanted to recognize um, uh, Mr. McCriskey, and then if Kate had some clarifying comments, the difference in um, the perception and the reality of, of that. Um, Mr. McCriskey, though, before I get too far. <laughs> no, and I just wanted to mention, Madam Chair, thank you as well, is that there's no violation of the open meeting law when two colleagues talk about an issue. Uh, we do talk about an issue. It's when we get together as a quorum or when, we're, uh, when we take a break and bond our heads together in agreement with something. Uh, but we learn about an issue when we talk to our department heads, when we talk to the town manager or our colleagues. And uh, I won't apologize for doing that. It's not a violation of the open meeting law, and that's how we learn. And that's how we, we come to a decision as elected officials, by talking to the people that are doing the job that we hire to do the job and to implement our policies. But we need to find out what the effect will be on these policies through our department heads. So it's not a violation of the open meeting law. There's a lot of talk about that, but I suggest that when people question that, if they truly question it, they should read the law for themselves and become educated. Uh, because we're living in a world now, and I've mentioned it before, everybody thinks that they want to get you. You know, we caught you doing this, we caught you doing that. Do your homework first. And I'm, I'm not, Pat, that's not directed at you, uh, but I've had people call me and ask me the same thing. And I've, I've said, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. McCriskey. Uh, yes. Sure. Would you like me to respond? Yes, please. Turn the mic on. Oh, that would help. Hang on. There we go. Am I on? Yes, you are. Um, so in terms of serial communication, uh, what that really means is that if a staff member or me or um, a, some other third party were to take the communications and disclose to the balance of the board. So what can't occur is I speak to Lou, and then I speak to Joe, and I said, this is what Lou said, and then I speak to Deborah, and I say, this is what Lou said, and pass it all around, right? So you can't use a third party to effectuate a deliberation um, and circumvent the open meeting law, but I certainly could write an email to the entire board, because I'm not a board member, and give them a piece of advice. Um, where it becomes tricky is if someone hit, were to hit the reply all button or something like that, and then they disclose their opinion. But what the town manager does is brief the board and not disclose his conversations with the other board members. 
So that would be acceptable. Thank you very much for that further clarification. Moving right along, uh, there are no further issues. Okay, uh, Mr. Cohn, please state your name and address. Thank you. My name is Robert Cohn. I live at 134 Cotlick Street, and I'd just like to bring something to the board. Town manager brought something in 50 years I never even realized. Street looks. And I look more now, and there's a couple of things that I'd like to bring to your attention. Number one, right across the street, there's a, something hanging out a window that talks about a trip. If we're trying to improve the town, why do we need stuff like that? You can see it as you walk right out the front door. Another thing that annoyed me even more, Central Street, a mother with a child panhandling. There's help for people that need help in this town. I don't care where you go. But to see that, it cheapens the town of Stoughton, at least in my opinion. And something should be done to stop panhandling on our streets. The third thing is um, your rubbish thing there. I have noticed I had to buy some appliances. My house is getting a little up in age. And most of the time, mattresses, they'll pick them up. Stove, I paid a slight fee. They picked it up. It was just a way to get it out of the house. A lot of that stuff, if you buy new. Another thing I noticed is mattresses put out four or five days above. Someone should not do that. If you can wait, fine. But it does cheapen the look to walk and see a mattress on a sidewalk. And I hope that can be addressed too. And also people moving out, they leave their stuff out in the street. No consideration on a weekend and sometime rubbish pickup is until Wednesday or Thursday. It does cheapen the neighborhood. And I hope that can be addressed very seriously. Uh, again, he brought it to my attention, and now I look all over. But those particular things, really, the panhandling and signs, we have a downtown. You don't have to advertise out in the window. You can see that or other things like that. So I appreciate if something can be done about it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cohn. And Ma Madam Chair, oh. uh, to address oh, Mr. Mr. Cohn's uh, uh, comments regarding the uh, mattresses and uh, putting material out on the uh, the road uh, several days ahead of time. Uh, I think that that is, uh, is being looked at now by our town council and uh, we probably will have uh, something to look at soon as a policy for the board of selectmen for the town. Thank you, Mr. Gito, and yes, um, Mr. Cohn. Also, when tenants put out all this debris and half of it can't be collected, I think the landlord should be held responsible. He rented the apartment, and it's up to him to make sure that all that stuff is taken care of. Thank you again. Thank you, Mr. Cohn. And the resident on the back row on my right side, yes, please step forward. Uh, state your name and address. Thank you. Hello and welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hello. Um, my name is Jonna Rosenblatt. Mm -hmm. um, hello, my name is Jonna Rosenblatt. And I have three things that I wanted to bring up. Um, first of all, I wanted to mention that I'm having a lot of trouble getting the um, schedule for the Climate Change Committee. I've been ghosted by the procurer of the um, committee, um, Molly. I uh, sent her three emails and she's completely ignored me. So I reached out to the board in the hopes that I could get this. Um, yes, I can check it on the website, but you know, maybe I have a computer glitch or maybe I don't happen to notice it after checking six days in a row and it's on the seventh day that that's listed or something. And I just asked for some assistance. And um, I felt very aggrieved by my response from Mr. Cavey because he said to me, um, and I'm paraphrasing and I'm just giving the gist of what he said, he didn't want to have to take on the responsibility of 
um, reminding, um, remembering to remind me of when the, uh, um, or notifying me when um, he finds out what the schedule is. And I just found that really um, uh, kind of egregious because you're supposed to be on the board helping people. You're supposed you get elected to help the constituents. I don't think what I asked was that terrible, and he made it sound more like some um, terrible consequences would occur if he didn't, and that wasn't it at all. And my question to him would be, if someone came to you and asked you to provide them with some information in the future, do you just say, I'm not going to take on that responsibility, or do you answer them differently than how you answered me? Uh, I was on that those email distributions between you and uh, Vice Chair Cavey. Mm -hmm. And first, I just wanted to share some information. I don't believe that organization has organized yet, mm -hmm. and uh, there's no information on the website mm -hmm. about that. But it did come across as a bit um, aggressive but um, that was my observation. But I would like, Vice Chair KB, can you speak to this? Because it's disheartening when yeah. uh, we're having this conversation. Yeah, so, so that we make sure that we're actually talking about what actually occurred. I, I did print up copies of the entire email exchange for anybody who would like them, the public included. Um, or, Scott, if you would like a copy, you good? Anybody over there? as well. Uh, I think it's important that, that they just hear through uh, what actually occurred. Can you pass the, please, <clears throat> please a couple please more pass as well. this out to the audience. Um, you can leave it on the front one, yeah. if you want them. And hopefully yes, I have help, it. Uh, uh -huh. uh, oh, thank you. This might help clear up um, uh, the reason this has changed. Okay, I, I recognize this, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, just for anybody who's looking at it, um, you'll see on a couple of pages, half the page is blacked out. It's uh, usually the bottom half. Uh, that's, there's nothing redacted from this. this that's just a, a prior part of an email chain that you will have already seen by the time you get there. Um, so it starts off with a, uh, an email from, uh, from Jonah. Uh, September, sorry, this is, would be July 11th uh, at 11.10 to the select to the selectman and the town manager. And it starts with a uh, screen print of uh, something that's labeled Exhibit A. It shows the, the establishment of the Climate uh, Action Plan Committee uh, as it was um, uh, appeared in our town, last town warrant. Can I have a copy of it, please? I didn't mean to interject, but By I... By all don't... means. Uh, and this is what town meeting did in fact vote on. I won't read through the whole thing, but this is, this is the uh, proposed article, and this is what town meeting voted on. Followed with the following comment. Uh, I would appreciate an explanation to the following questions. Please note the attachment which prompts this inquiry for, the, for an explanation. Why is it that six people volunteer for the climate committee and six were supposed to be selected according to the attached page, but only five were allowed to be chosen. Looking at the Climate Committee's own proposed page, referenced above, someone changed the number of people down to five before the selection process began. Why is this? The town meeting reps voted in good faith on a proposal for nine in total, of which six persons uh, w would be required from the general public and population of Stoughton. This ignores the number of town, uh, this ignores the number the town meeting rep voted for, voting all caps, uh, voted on. Uh, further, I have made several good faith attempts to get an, uh, an the upcoming climate committee's meeting date, time and places for the uh, procurer of the committee, uh, Molly, but I've had zero response to my three requests. Could you please give me ba uh, get back to me on these matters? So I looked into it and uh, the first set of statements were, were simply false. We voted for six members uh, as w was required. Uh, and we, uh, so I responded back. Um, unfortunately, I, I, I was mostly sort of uh, focused on the first part of the, of the request, not the second part, but on this, this um, uh, accusation that we, we had somehow uh, uh, missed our duty on this case. And I just responded back uh, about at 11.22, so about 12 minutes later. Uh, on July 20th, 
Uh, the select board voted, uh, sorry, appointed six members to the Climate Action Plan Committee as required by the town meeting's vote. Uh, this vote was reaffirmed on July 23rd, sorry, July 27th, be well, Stephen Cavey. At 11.52, I re received the response, and this is, was CC'd to all the members of the board plus the town manager's office. I still have not received the information I requested as to when, where, and time of the committee meeting. Can you please provide that information? <clears throat> and at this time, there was no, that I'm, that I'm aware of, there was no date, there was no attempt for them to, to meet. Uh, additionally, uh, Besides appointing members, uh, the select board had no jurisdiction over this, so I responded back. The select board has no jurisdiction over the climate, pla uh, climate Action Plan Committee. We don't know when they will meet or where they will meet. Uh, only they can decide that. Uh, they are required to post their meetings agendas at least 48 hours before they meet, not including weekends and holidays, in accordance with the open meeting law. I suggest you keep an eye out for those postings to know the answers to your question. Be well, Stephen Cavey. At 1 o'clock, 1.08, I received a response that said, so you are saying that you can't find the information out for me even though I'm requesting it from you. Exactly where is it posted? Because the town website doesn't have the category of information, which is probably the case because the committee hadn't yet formed. <clears throat> to which I responded, I'm personally not willing to take ownership of tracking and reporting on the meeting schedules of autonomous boards and committees outside of my jurisdiction. Similarly, if someone wanted to know when the next planning board or finance committee meeting is going to occur, I would ask that they consult the town website or reach out to the members of those independent bodies. I still do not have, uh, sorry, I simply do not have the time to put into areas outside my responsibilities since the information you're looking for is public information to which I have no special access. I regret that I, cannot, I will not be able to assist you. With respect to the climate action plan committee, the select board's only role in the appointment of, was, was in the appointment of six members. We accomplished that requ requirement on July 20th and have no further role in their work, including when and where they assemble. June 20th, sorry. June 20th, and have no further role in their work, including when or where they assemble. Any questions you have regarding th this committee should be sent to the committee itself. Be well, Stephen Cavey to which I received the response at 4.39. Uh, I've already told you that after three attempts to contact Molly, she hasn't responded, therefore I'm asking you to please reach out to her. If Molly has responded, then I, would, uh, then I, would not, I wouldn't have bothered you. I feel as though I'm being thwarted from getting this information. At this point, I didn't have any, any further information to provide, uh, and I felt like I, I said everything that I, I possibly could on this matter. Um, and uh, beyond just feeling like, uh, as a select board member, my role is not to be the personal secretary of every member of, of, of the community, uh, I, I just simply had other things I was working on. I have a day job as well. Uh, the following day, let me show you. No, two days later, I received an email, this is June 13th at 2.22. Uh, I received the following response. Uh, Mr. Cavey, there are no detrimental consequences that will severely impact your life for forgetting to let me know dates, uh, times, places of upcoming climate meetings, but as an, a quote, elected selectman, when a con constituent requests such benign information, your present response is not only unhelpful and unreasonable, but it, but it renders you to appear unwilling to assist or help. Mm -hmm. Due the, to the uh, aforementioned, uh, aforementioned, I am officially requesting time to be heard on this matter at the next selectman's meeting, please. Thank you in advance. I was the only person on this message, so I forwarded it to uh, Chair Roberts with the following message. Uh, this is at 320. Chair Roberts, I'm, following, uh, I'm forwarding the below because you're responsible for the select board agenda and adding items uh, are done at your discretion. Be well, thank you, Stephen Cavey. Uh, the following page, unfortunately, I, I did have um, Deborah's response. It's, it's below, though. It says, uh, hello, Ms. John uh, Kennick, which is, uh, I think, how your, that is how your uh, email reads. Um, 
Nice to virtually meet you. The next select board meeting is tentatively scheduled for July 25th. This is a tentative date because it is unconfirmed. During this meeting, there will be an agenda item and time to hear and potentially act upon citizens' comments. Uh, the select board ongoingly updates the town website to publicize our meeting dates. Re regards, Deborah Roberts, Chair Select Board, uh, to which John responded. Uh, hello, Deborah. Thank you for the information. I will be there tonight. Uh, and this was sent earlier today. Uh, my name is uh, John Rosenblatt, and uh, my email is Jay Kennick. Uh, I appreciate your help. And that is the end of the correspondence. Um, I'm certainly willing to hear uh, a criticism of that if, if there's other people who believe that that was inappropriate. Uh, uh, personally, I, I did make an attempt to, to uh, even where it started off um, as a, as a hostile a comment to the board, accusing us of, of doing things we did not do. Uh, still did my best to try to point in the right direction, and I didn't have any special information that she couldn't get herself, uh, but the idea that it became my responsibility to run it down and respond to it, I thought was uh, more than I, I felt our uh, charter and general laws require of me, and I, I think I did everything I, I had to uh, with regard to this correspondence. Um, as I said, I'm willing to hear criticism. Uh, I do ask that this, the, this email, I'll send this over to, uh, uh, I'll CC this to uh, Ms. Stanton and also to Gilda that be added to the minutes, uh, so that it's clear that what actually transpired in these, in these uh, correspondence. Thank you. Can I respond? Uh, thank you, Ms. Mr. KV, for that detailed explanation. Uh, I would, you raised your hand, you would like to make a comment, but I would like to say you would not hear any criticism uh, from me in this regard. Uh, it is troubling that um, I know you had other things going on. We all had other things going on. Um, in regard to the select board, such as writing policies. So once again, you will not hear a criticism from me. Um, I would like to ask our resident, um, her name on the email is Jana Kinnick, but she corrected and said her name is Rosenblatt. So I would like to hear what what went wrong with this whole dialogue? Well, what went wrong, I think, is it was um, predicated on the fact that at the beginning, before this situation even happened, when I came to the meeting to be um, potentially chosen as one, even though I didn't feel it was, well, anyway, um, even though I came down to be potentially selected, at that point, um, I had said to him, there's five people excuse me, six people here in five positions, because that's how I thought it was. I was told that and I was misinformed, so I'm, I'm wrong on that, that's fine. And when I started off, when I first sat down, I said, I just want to ask, because there's six people in five positions, can't we just have everybody? What, what would be the big deal? You know, I just thought that was an innocent question, and I felt he um, pretty much uh, jumped down my throat and um, was, um, it was unnecessary um, for him to be combative. Um, he said something to the effect of, um, we are the ones that are going to um, interview the people and um, that's how it's gonna be done and just kind of dismissed my, my, um, my question. I think it would have been a lot, um, a, a lot different had I had said that and he said, oh no, you know, there's certain protocols we have to follow, we can't do that, but that's a good question, I understand. It was more combative, it was more um, to, it, was, it wasn't it was um, an open, I didn't feel he had an open mind. And I think that set the tone because I didn't care for the way he answered me, but I wasn't gonna say anything there because I'm trying to get on this committee in the hopes of getting onto the committee. And I feel that's the other thing that I wanted to address when I'm going off on a different tangent. I don't feel that um, you, the, the most of the select board, not all of them, really wanted to have balance. They just wanted all people that would toe the party line and w would um, go along with this agenda. I wanted to provide a balance. I wanted to provide 
by going into that committee. This is some of the other th factors um, that you might not agree with, but that you have to take into consideration because if you're going to implement things that are going to affect the town, we should have all issues addressed, all aspects addressed. And I don't feel that that's what, what was um, trying to be accomplished here. Not by all the um, selectmen, but by the majority. And that's why I feel I didn't get on. But that's an, going off on a different tangent, I realize. But that was one of the other things that I was going to address. So you felt that you were, you applied, so the first issue is regarding your interaction between Mr. Cavey at right a from meeting. from the get-go. And then that's the reason you outreached to Mr. K Mr. Cavey? No, I reached out to all of you. Oh, okay. Um, but he's the only one that responded, so that's why I responded back. No one else did, so that's why I responded to him. So I think that set the tone because I already felt like he was antagonistic towards me. Um, and I'm not saying that just on my own. Um, I had other people, other townspeople say to me when they saw the meeting, um, I found him to be very antagonistic to, towards you. Now, I didn't go out seeking that because I wanted to see if anyone else noted it and if I prejudiced them, that wouldn't be any good. And there were others that said that to me as well. Thank you very much. Uh, and then I also wanted wait, to- Wait, just one minute. I just wanted, did you want to make a comment? I, I'm not trying yeah, to do no, no, one I, for I, one, I two did for because tat, but just to kind of summarize. I did because number one, I don't think it was antagonistic. I think that Mr. Cavey answered the question straight forth and sometimes for straight forth is not accepted well by some people. I don't know people's frames of mind. Excuse me, are you uh, referring? No, I'm going to. I'm going to. I just I'm don't know what you're referring to. Are you I, referring I'm, to? I'm comment. You made a comment directed at Mr. Cavey that he was antagonistic. I read the emails. I don't think it was antagonistic. But I'm not referring to the emails. You're missing. You're, you're, you're okay, missing. And, you're, and then you said no, that I'm, I'm you also to said. The no, I'm going to have my word now. Okay, but you you're not. You also said not, here right. just one now at a time, please. That you mm -hmm. felt the board was not open to a process because you didn't make it on. Now. I voted the way I expected. The problem I have with the whole thing, number one, is you didn't get a response from the chair of the committee who's responsible for those minutes of the meetings. They were supposed to be you know, held in accordance with the law. Mm -hmm. If a resident reaches out, you reach out to the committee chair, which we have zero authority over. That's a, stand, a committee of town meeting. Mm -hmm. So the moderator would be the one that you would reach out to, not a select board member, because we don't have that authority. We could, and we don't have that authority, ma'am. No, just, I understand, but okay, I wish so, I'd been told And that. I applaud I Mr. Cady right for now, trying to, to respond to you. No, that's fine. But it was obviously, it didn't go the way you, you would like and no, you know so and, no, and it no. and I would say I've had that happen to me and I've apologized because I can't control how somebody thinks about my response but again but I'm more concerned with the whole thing that you've been ghosted by the chair of the committee mm -hmm. that's unacceptable exactly that's exactly. unacceptable that's all I'm and, trying to say when and I, I agree with help, you on I got, that I got, so I promise I you on. that I will make sure the chair gets a message through the moderator that Excellent. when a resident yes. reaches Excellent. out to her and asks for minutes of the meeting she has an obligation under the law Perfect. to follow that Perfect. Okay. That's all I'm asking exactly. for. Exactly. And that will be correct. Not what I got responded by that. Well, from well that. again, it was, I mean, I can't, I'm not going to get just involved one in that debate. Time, but all I'm saying is you are right in that. And I'd like to make sure that we resolve this now. Because we'll talk about this all night long. And I don't think we'll resolve it to everybody's liking. But one thing that you are 100% right, and I will personally reach out to the moderator to make sure that the chair of the committee gets you those minutes of the meetings. Perfect. And to make sure that those minutes are posted like they're supposed to be with the town clerk's office for the residents and to make sure that the town manager gets them so that they can go on the town website. That's what the whole issue is, and you're spot on for that one. Okay? And we'll get that done. You know, and again, I just, you know, what we do here, and I've said this many times, we're residents like you. We're up here just trying to do the right thing. And unfortunately, sometimes these debates take off and people wonder what this one meant by this. And I've always said, listen to the words I'm saying. Don't think about what gotcha. I mean. So I apologize that you have, on behalf of the town, you shouldn't have had that problem you, from the chair of that committee. I and I will personally call the moderator and make sure that you get those minutes. 
Right. And I just want to interject with one quick thing. I wasn't referring to the emails. I was referring to the, referring to the specific meeting. So I was trying to correct you in case you were going to go and address that. I didn't want you yeah, to address the wrong thing. No, I'm not going to get. That was I between gotcha. you and Mr. Cavey. I got you. I got you. I, you know, I, gotcha. I, no I, I, I trust Mr. Cavey, and that's it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Okay. And okay. then the, you had a second issue. I, I don't think there's anywhere else to go with that part of the conversation. Uh, but you had another question. I wanted to make uh, yes. sure. Um, well, basically, um, I went off on that tangent, and um, Joe McCriskey was p kind enough to give me what I was seeking. All I was seeking was an answer, and I even would have said to Mr. Cavey, which um, I was, I should have, I was trying to interject before, when he was just dismissing me, because that's how I felt it was, whether he was trying to do that or not, you're not acknowledging that I even felt that way, which is very... Uh, uh, disheartening, but nonetheless, if you had said to me something to the effect of what Joe said, or, you know, I don't know when the when the meetings are. It's not really under my jurisdiction. Um, I'm going to make a phone call. I'll find out for you, Molly. What's? Could you let me know? That's all I was asking for. You made this bigger than it had to be. That's how I feel because I felt I had to keep coming back because I wasn't getting my answer answered and I was being dismissed and I didn't care for it. And that's why I came. Uh, I, maybe you said I, I, I was came off aggressive, which I have to laugh because most people say I'm very soft spoken and meek and I never hear that. So maybe I'm finally getting a little more assertive in my life. But I say please in the emails. I, I, I mean, you're also asking asking me not to um, anticipate what his, um, uh, what he was trying to get across to me, yet you're telling me how you, I came across to you and that wasn't accurate either. That's all. But, because um, I wasn't being aggressive. That's, I had other people look it over to give me their opinion, to see how it was coming off, and no one used the word aggressive. And these aren't aggressive people, so I, I find that a little, uh, a little bit of uh, hard to swallow. But you have your right to your opinion. I'm not going to hold it against you. You seem very kind and nice when you answer me in my email, and I appreciated it. And I really did mean what I said in um, thanking you for your time and your effort in that. So, but Joe really nailed it. He just took it and answered it. That's all I wanted. And it took me an awful lot of going around in a circle to finally get this. So thank you. Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Coulter, I have something else to say. Maybe I just suggest uh, in general uh -huh. that in the future, uh, emails can be often misunderstood and misinterpreted, uh, that a phone call be made to me or any member of my office, and we'll be happy to track that down. Perfect. We're paid employees. The board of all, are all volunteers who mm -hmm. work 30 hours a week on making policy. Mm -hmm. And I can, I can tell you just for the record, not because he's my boss, um, I worked in the legislature 13 years, and Kingston's a town administrator for two and a half, and here for nine months. Uh, I would suggest you and Mr. Cavey sit down, because I don't know a finer gentleman I've ever worked with. Just wanted to say that. Okay, well, I didn't get that impression, but I'm always open to making that happen so we resolve things and put them behind us. I'm a big fan, I'm a fan of that, so that's fine. Okay, so well, we my have, door's open. Don't be afraid to look up the chair's home telephone number in the book and call her up. Do we know who the chair is, Madam Chairman? Oh, you mean Molly Cochran? Yeah, Molly, Molly Cochran is the chair. Molly, do we know me we do not not is know the that, chair? We do not know that Molly Cochran is the chair. Right, so I mean, I'm, I'm kind of concerned that we are disparaging another member of the town who has taken the time to be uh, involved in the town when we don't even know who the person is. Well, can I interrupt? I, so I, I, I just referred to the chair of that committee. No, I know, but okay. other people have not done that. Okay, but, yeah, okay, but, I, but the point is when I wanted to sign up for the committee, I was in email contact in connection with Molly all along. Then once I was at, not selected, know, then I was blown off, and she never answered me three times. So just, that's just, why just, I, just I, I wonder how long I, I we're going to go on <laughs> with this kind of discussion and, and whether this is the forum for that. And I think that we need to develop some ground rules on dealing with issues like this. That's exactly where I was going with Thank this. you. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. Madam I, I wasn't uh, trying to disparage yes, anyone. Um, it's just that I was in email contact with her. She was answering me, answering me, and then when I wasn't on the committee, she just completely ghosted Madam me. Madam Chair, I times, move times. that we take a five-minute recess. Can I say yes. one thing? Oh, before we do, uh, Mr. Carrara has a comment. This is why I don't email anybody. <laughs> you want me? You call me. Mm -hmm. Most people show up at my garage. You don't garage. have a phone number on there. <laughs> right. No, it's well, in the book, though. Uh, oh, okay. I, there's a uh, motion on the floor to have a five-minute uh, recess. Can I get a second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. And I vote aye as well. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, just five minutes. <laughs> Thank you. For Thank you very much.
Are we ready to, is five minutes up? Okay. Hello, is everyone ready to reconvene? It's been about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> I use, I use the sun. <laughs> the select board will reconvene uh, tonight, July 25th at 8.01 p.m. Uh, our agenda items are, we're on agenda item number four, citizens' comments. Are there any citizens? No, we're all done with that. Well, might be someone online. I just want to recognize if there's someone online for citizens' comments. With none, moving right along to our next agenda item, consent agenda. Approval A, 5A, approval of open session meeting minutes of June 6th. 2023, June 13th, 2023, and June 15th, 2023, and 5B. Application for road race or parade permit, Stoughton Day on September 30th, 2023. Does anyone want to pull any of those agenda items? I see- June 6th. Uh, I, uh, 30th, I'm sorry. I see Matt Kushan Recreation. Yes. June 6th. June 6th. You're pulling, uh, holding June 6th. Are there any other items? Okay. With there being none. Can we just have Matt do a presentation after Lou handles his? That way people will know that it's happening instead oh, of just okay. punching and it it's, through. Oh, wonderful. That's a way to promote the event as well. Uh, Mr. Gito, first for June 6th. Uh, yes. Uh, on, um, on those meetings, I had uh, uh, sent a note to, uh, to Gilda and to the rest of the board members indicating uh, a change that, uh, that should be in, made in the minutes. Uh, and it, it reads as follows. Mr. Gito suggested the application for constables that were for public review, like the information in the agenda packet, exclude the social security number of the uh, applicants for constable. Uh, the social security number can be blacked out or, other or in other ways be excluded. And the reason for, for that is uh, that the social security number is an important, doc uh, an important item and in fact can be used to, uh, to sort of mess up a person's uh, life and steal an identity from a person. And we shouldn't be uh, having that in our packet. I don't think we should have it in our packet at all. And, but certainly it shouldn't be in a packet that goes out for, the, uh, for all the world to see. Because it's not only the people in town that can look at, uh, at the internet, but anyone in the world. So we should be careful about that. So that's, that's what I said, and, or the essence of what I said, and I would like that recorded in the meeting. Do you want Thank a motion you, to amend that, Lou? <coughs> that, that is my, my motion. Second. Mm -hmm. So when we, we vote on it, we vote it as, the amend, as amended. Um, Mr. Kushan, can you tell us about your event? 
Please state your name and your title, please. Matt Koshan, uh, Recreation Director. Um, so Stoughton Day, um, proposing September 30th, uh, Saturday, uh, 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. at Halloran Park this year. Um, food trucks, uh, live bands, we'll have uh, close to 50 local vendors, uh, kids, act kids activities, touch a truck. Um, it is honestly my favorite community event to run because it's a big party in the park um, with neighbors and community members that we get to mingle for a couple hours um, and get to know one each other and have a really good time. Um, so hopefully we'll have some good weather. I encourage everybody to come out. Uh, anyone that would like to participate as a vendor, uh, whether you're a nonprofit or a local business, um, registration will be up on our website at stoughtonrec.org. Um, I'll put it up, try to put it up tomorrow. Um, they can sign up for a table. Um, and we'll give out more information uh, prior to the event. Um, but I really encourage everybody, if you're new to town or haven't been to this event, uh, please come out. Um, it's a really fun community, community day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Is there a motion to accept the consent agenda of the minutes of June 6th as amended? So made. Second. All in favor? Aye. aye. And I vote aye as well. Thank you. Moving right along to the next agenda item, which is boards and commissions. Uh, Brockton area trans. The whole consent agenda. We did. Okay. Yes, our, our motion was to approve the consent agenda. That was 5A, oh, the meeting minutes, and 5B, which was the road race that were approved. <laughs> You're quite welcome. No. Um, the next is Brockton Area Transit. A motion to appoint um, Mr. Zoll to that commission. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And I vote aye as well. Congratulations, Mr. Zoll. Did you want to say a few words or just accept it and handshake and that's it? <laughs> Please state your name and address <laughs> if you're here. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. I've served on that particular board uh, for several years beforehand, uh, and I will uh, be attentive to uh, the needs of seniors going through council on aging and through um, uh, disabled people going through the council of disabilities as well as uh, other uh, um, constituencies and uh, um, and uh, I've served in the town in other capacities my 38 years here and uh, that's, that's it all. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Zoll. Please feel free to come back and give us updates as you hear things. Thanks. Uh, moving right along to agenda item number seven, to consider adjustments to the solid waste rates, policies, practices, procedures, and operations. Votes may be taken. Mr. Calter. Good evening, Madam Chair. On behalf of the Solid Waste Working Group, I'd like to thank you and the members of the board for this opportunity to present our recommendations for changes to the solid waste operation and its rate structure. Madam Chair, earlier this year, I alerted the board to significant structural deficits in the FY24 budget for three enterprise fund accounts and in the solid waste department, which is not an enterprise account. The structural deficits impact free cash, limits on our ability to build our reserves, and threaten our bond rating. Upon disclosure of these serious financial issues, the board provided me with clear guidance with respect to the solid waste program. The board's instructions included the creation of a solid waste working group, the examination of historical financial data, the evaluation of standard operating procedures, and research on industry best practices that support our fiscal and environmental obligations. The board further directed that we schedule a public information session to inform residents of the scope and complexity of the solid waste problems. That session was held on April 13th. Considerable input was received from our residents at that time. Finally, the board held two rate hearings, which were rebroadcasted by SMAC more than 40 times. I'd like to thank SMAC for their cooperation and for their partnership in doing that. 
During those rate hearings, we received valuable and informative feedback from those in attendance. I'm pleased to say that the feedback we received has shaped the program that the Solid Waste Working Group is recommending to you this evening. Should you support this program and recommendation, I have taken the liberty of preparing a motion for members' consideration. I've broken this presentation down into two or three very simple areas, none of which the public has not seen in the past in previous presentations. I'd like to start with the major, objecti major objectives that are the foundation of our proposals. They have not changed in many regards. As a reminder, those objectives which we intend to achieve, number one, to fully extinguish the solid waste structural deficit in the FY25 budget. Let me explain that. We can't uh, close the deficit in fiscal 24 because enacting the program October 1st only gives us two quarters of, of these changes. So the first full budget where this program is enacted, it's our goal to get to break even. That's our objective. Objective number two, to improve roadside cleanliness and overall town appearance. Three, to separate and manage Stoughton's per capita household waste by separating residential waste from solid waste streams, i.e. furniture, white goods, etc. Four, to implement effective programs for inspectional services and program enforcement. A, an inspector will be beginning employment with our town, which has been budgeted for two years and unfilled, on August 7th. That, per, that person will be, do, will be uh, performing zoning enforcement uh, uh, services under the direction of Mr. Tisdale, but for the first 90 days, we'll be coaching, teaching, uh, working with our teams to educate and bring awareness to the public with regard to the separation of waste streams. He'll be driving around to every planned uh, pickup site every day, uh, knocking on doors and sharing information. Fourth objective, to implement effective programs, uh, excuse me, for program enforcement. We will be partnering with Stoughton's Law Enforcement uh, Police Department, and we will be stopping at the borders illegal dumping wherever possible, and when we catch the people that are bringing that material into town, we will seek to prosecute them under the full extent of the law. The fifth objective, to increase recycling efforts by promoting education and awareness to all Stoughton residents. Those have been our objectives from the beginning and they remain our objectives today. Here are the key components of the action plan which I know our residents are waiting to hear. This presentation will be provided in the back. I believe it is provided in the back. If not, it will be. And it, it, it uh, matches up exactly with the brochures at the back of the room. So no need to take notes. Beginning October 1st, the flat quarterly rate of $90 per household um, will be assessed for rubbish removal. It is a, it'll begin October 1st, and it'll be effective in the February 24th excuse me, the February 2024 billing. And that's per quarter. Right? That's per quarter, thank you. Uh, we'll reevaluate re the program next July 1st. We will take the actual six months of performance to reevaluate the rates to determine whether they should be adjusted up or down. The objective will remain for years to come to keep this program at break even. The second major step in the action plan we will separate residential rubbish, white goods, and solid waste. The third objective, schedule pickup and publish rate for solid waste management, furniture, bedding, whites, etc. We will provide a phone number, a direct line to the program manager who will schedule the pickups of those materials. Those will not be included in the rubbish pickups. Number four, senior eligibility has been set at 65 years old and seniors will receive a 50% discount off of the, the rate. In fact, that's a slight, a modest decrease over what seniors are paying today. Number five, owner-occupied homes that are held in trust are eligible for this discount. Number six, there will be premium rates charged for multiple family homes. 
A two-family quarterly rate is $225. That's 2.5 times the unit rate. A three-family quarterly rate is $360. That's four times the quarterly rate. Now, why is that? Because there's a turnover in residents all the time. It's where we have our greatest expense in labor and disposal costs. Number seven, there is no change in the existing rubbish and recycling curbside pickup schedule. Number eight, all rubbish put on the curb must be packed in a plastic bag of your choice or in a barrel of 32 gallons or less. We will not pick up rubbish on the curb that is not packaged in some way, either in a plastic bag of the homeowner's choice or in a plastic barrel. Why is that? A lot of the trash in town is from material blowing around off the curb into neighbor's yards onto the streets in the barrel should be covered. Uh, if it's in a plastic bag within the barrel, it doesn't need to be covered. So we're serious about beautifying Stoughton. And thank you, Bob, for mentioning that. We're very serious. So not only do we have to stop illegal dumping and putting material on curbs four days before their pickup, which we'll react to, but we've got to make sure it's secure in either a bag or a barrel, a bag of your choice, not one you have to purchase for the town of Stoughton. Number, number nine, looking to the future. The Solid Waste Working Group will invite the community Energy and Sustainability Committee members and Climate Action Plan Committee members to engage in discussions regarding future program improvements. There were many recommendations made over the past two rate hearings that we're going to study and we're going to do that in collaboration with those two committees. And finally, number 10, the Solid, Solid Waste Working Group will extend an open invitation to all town meeting reps if they to see if they choose to attend the monthly meetings where they can give their input. So that is the action plan. With respect to education and awareness, a short-term awareness and outreach strategy will be executed to inform residents of the program changes, rate increase, and fees for solid waste pickup and disposal. I want to review just a few of the elements of our um, communication plan. Number one, the brochure you will find at the back of the room will be printed in English and in Portuguese and will be distributed widely across the town at stores, at the library, uh, and the like. In the month of September, which is the month prior to the execution and kickoff of the plan, we're going to do two 911 notification calls, bringing to people's attention that the program begins October 1st and that they should pick up a brochure so they understand uh, the rate, the fee for services, and et cetera. Town Facebook will be loaded with the brochure and all pertinent information. We are considering mass mailing of the brochure to every resident. Uh, the only thing that may change that is, is um, the expense associated with a mass mailing, but we're looking to find that money in the budget. The new electronic billboard, which will be built in front of um, DPW uh, will list information every day on what route and to where to pick up that brochure. The town web website will be updated every week. There will be an October public information session, which SMAC will cover and replay twice a week for two weeks. SMAC will interview the department head, who is Paul and myself, so that we continue to get information out to the public. Number nine, we'll be doing a Council on Aging presentation we're going to video that and play that on SMAC as well. And finally, we're going to engage the schools, community groups, and the general public, and including themselves and joining us in a townwide cleanup day on October, where the DPW will be providing roll-off containers, uh, barrels, plastic bags, and we try to give the town a real facelift before the winter months are upon us. Madam Chair, while I'm proud of the work performed by the Solid Waste Working Group, our work is not done. While we ask for your vote on this proposal so that we can implement the plan, we will continue to meet monthly to examine opportunities for the program improvements proposed by residents. Those programs, which we will examine at the request of residents, include pay-as-you-throw, a private pay rubbish program, use of drums and or stickers, and the construction of a town-wide transfer station. 
We will invite town meeting members and the public interest groups to join the working group in its examination of alternative approaches to rubbish and solid waste management. I want to make clear before I get a, a, uh, an aggressive email, we're not, the committee is not right now proposing any of those alternatives, but the public asked that we study those alternatives. So I don't want anybody to write and say that go into private pay. That's not our plan. But because members of the public asked us to research it, that's our responsibility, that's our duty. And in, in next July, we will bring a report to this board uh, summarizing the data we've, we've, uh, we've uncovered on those options. And uh, if the board instructs us, as you did here, uh, to move forth with further examination, we'll do that and we'll be ready for a mid-year uh, recommendation on the rate and structure. In closing, I just want to remind everybody that the fees for solid waste removals, the transportation and disposal, and the fee for white transportation, there is no disposal cost, has been and is listed in the brochure, uh, and, and that hasn't changed. So, Madam Chair, um, I've taken the liberty, um, uh, pending your deliberation, or the board's deliberation, uh, uh, we've taken a shot with review of council on a motion, uh, but certainly uh, myself and the committee, the working group members are happy to answer any questions that the members may have before asking for that vote. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Mr. Coulter. Uh, does any board member have a question or comment? <laughs> Mr. Carrara? Mm -hmm. The only comment through you, Madam Chairman, to the town manager and the committee. Um, 20, 2029 is when we have to re establish our rates with uh, CMAS or Covanta, whatever you want to call it, this week. But that's when I think we'll be looking. Tom can report on it, but I don't think we have to worry about it because we're safe to that date because it, we, we have the same rate till that date. And by, the, the, by them separating what we've done now should help us a lot and be able to sustain what we're doing till at least 2029 to find out if they are going forward still down there or changing another way. So that's all I have to say. Thank you, Mr. Carrara. Uh, Mr. Calder. Madam Chair, I agree with Scott's point. Uh, that is the biggest expense in this program is the user fee for the rubbish that we dispose of and the solid waste we bring to the C&D facility. However, there are other variables that we can't be certain of. In making projections for getting to break even, uh, we don't know how many of our seniors are going to take advantage at 65 of this new discounted rate. That's going to impact our break even. We don't know how many multifamilies are going to turn to private pay pickup uh, because their rates are going up significantly. It would have been anybody's guess. So we made assumptions on what we think the impact of those two policy changes will be. But we won't know until at least two full quarters of running the program what the hard numbers are. And that's why, although I, I agree with Scott completely that the biggest impact item is CMAS. Uh, those other variables could make a substantial swing for the good or the bad. It's, it's, uh, and it's only something we can evaluate after actually running the program for two quarters. I know Scott agrees with that, or at least he better. Are there any other questions or comments? Uh, my questions have been answered uh, time and time again as I reflect on uh, the public hearings and the information that was requested by our residents, by the citizens of the town of Stoughton, whether they were here, online, or on the phone, or, or email. Um, you put together a nice first step at this uh, serious, very serious issue. Uh, so I commend you and your team for doing that. And the idea that you're going to monitor this and you have set a time when you're going to specifically, we're going to put it on our calendar and, and pin it on uh, for our uh, next, for our agenda at the appropriate time. So we are, we ensure 
fellow select board members and the audience that we are monitoring and we won't forget. So thank you so much for identifying a date, because a lot of times you just, a lot of people say, oh yeah, we'll do it next year, but they don't set a specific date. That means it's open-ended, but you did differently. So thank, thank you, you and your, your team for doing that. Anything else? Uh, motion? Would I? Oh yes, Mr. Corey, please feel free. Before the vote, I'd just um, like to thank all the residents who showed up at the two meetings that it um, for their time and input on on the situation, and it shows great faith in their effort that their rights as citizens are working. We listened, we heard, we deliver now. Thank you. Okay. Is there a motion? Steve? If you would like me to read the motion and then you could adopt it, Mr. Keevy, I move that the town, that in accordance with general laws, chapter 44, section 28C and any other applicable authority, the board vote as follows. One, to set the fees for the collection and disposal of bulky items as follows. A, fiberglass bathtub, $40 each. B, mattress, $60 each. C, box springs, $25 each. D, couch, $51 each. E, sleeper couch, $64 each. F, monitor and laptops, $20 each. G, televisions, $20 each. H, furniture larger than four feet by four feet, $45 each. I, for furniture smaller than four feet by four feet, $31 each. J, electronics not otherwise specified, $20 each. Two, to set the rates for annual rubbish collection effective September 1st, 2023 through June 30th, 2024 as follows. A, single family homes, $90 per quarter. B, two family homes, $220 per quarter. C, three family homes, $360 per quarter. If a multifamily home is entirely occupied by a single family with members of such family living separately in each unit, the single family home rate of $90 per quarter shall apply. Single family households seeking this relief shall submit a request for the same with the town manager and shall provide such application and documentation as the town manager shall reasonably require. The town manager, in his or her sole discretion, uncontestable discretion, ooh, excuse me, strike that. The town manager, in his or her sole uncontestable discretion, shall timely act on any such request, and the town manager's decision shall be final. Three, and further, to provide a 50% discount on all rates for residents 65 years of age and older in a single family home, provided said resident occupies the residence being served and is an owner of said residence, whether or not said residence is owned in trust, provided the resident demonstrates eligibility under the Department of Revenue Informational Guideline Release Number 91-209. Four, to provide recycling collections twice monthly for properly separated recyclable items, provide, provided that the department be directed to refuse to collect recyclable items which have been commingled with non-recyclable items and provided such items are placed in a container labeled, quote, recyclables. 
Five, to prohibit the following items from being left for regular collection and to direct the department to refuse to collect such items. A, home construction, repair or demolition materials, including but not limited to sheetrock, shingles, lumber, fences, carpeting, rugs, and other like materials. B, logs, stumps, brush, branches, and other yard waste. C, rocks, dirt, concrete, asphalt, sand, gravel, and other similar materials. D, pallets and skids. E, hot coals or embers. F, tires. G, motor oil. H, bathroom fixtures, including but not limited to toilets, sinks, tubs. I, animal excrement. J, 50 or 55 gallon drums. K, car parts. L, furniture. M, mattresses. N, TVs, monitors, printers, or other electronics. Tronics. O, fluorescent light bulbs. Six, to provide collection and disposal of bulky metal objects at a fee of $30 per item. You're going to make amendment, right? So. Oh, I, I apologize. One more. Seven, the board... A, hereby delegates to and authorizes the town manager in his or her sole uncontestable discretion the authority to grant abatements in full or in part to any of the above upon proper application provided that any such abatement does not conflict with state law, that the applicant demonstrates a unique hardship, financial or otherwise, and that such abatements are in the public interest and the enforcement of the fee would otherwise do manifest injustice. The town manager shall timely act on such requests and the town manager's decision shall be final and B, hereby requires and B, hereby requires the town manager to record and preserve for three years the record of each abatement in a form readily available for public view. End. Thank you. I would like to adopt that motion with the following um, uh, minor amendment. Um, item two, to set the rates for annual rubbish collection effective October 1st rather than September 1st, uh, 2023 through July 30th, 2024, as follows. Second. All in favor, and we'll do this by roll call vote. Uh, Mr. McCriskey? Yes. Vice Chair Cage? Yes. Mr. Carrara? Yes. And I vote yes as well. It's a unanimous decision. Thank you, members. We appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, is there any other business for the board? If not, the board will be entering into executive session to discuss a strategy with respect to collective bargaining with AFSCME Council 93, Public Safety Dispatch, Stoughton Police Patrolman's Union, Stoughton Professional Administrative Employees Association, Stoughton Police Superiors Officers Union, MCOP, Local 461, and the Stoughton Library Staff Association pursuant to GL General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, and subject to the Chair's uh, declaration. And also in executive session to discuss pursuant to General Law Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, subject to the chair's discretion to discuss imminent anticipated integration. Wow. I made the finding that discussing these items in open session may be detrimental to the town's negotiation or litigation positions. Therefore, they will be discussed in his exit in executive session. We will not be returning to open session, but will adjourn from the executive session. Uh, motion to adjourn into executive session, please. So moved. Second. All in favor, we have to do this by roll call vote. Going to executive. Yes, sir. Yes. 
Mr. McCriskey? Yes. Mr. Yes. Vice Chair Cavey? Mr. Carr? Yes. And I vote yes as well. Great. Thank you very much and have a nice evening, everyone. Good night and see you next time.